does it does it respect the the original text? Um, how much was that job one in your mind, even before you jumped into season one, to keep it true to fans of 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 the work of the original text? Uh, I think we'd say it's extremely important. Uh, we began every day with the writers' room with a quote from the uh, from the text. Uh, we have people on staff uh, who are constantly in our, our meetings, uh, giving us uh, guidelines and guidance uh, to help us uh, know where we are within the lore. I mean, we know it well ourselves, but people who are sort of you know, more like PhD level in in uh, 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 Middle Earth and then the Legendarium. We uh, uh, work very closely with the Tolkien estate. They have kind of an unprecedented seat at the table um, in terms of their involvement, uh, where they see you know, a season outline at the, at the beginning of, of the development process and are able to give notes to steer the project along. So it's very, very important to us um, to do something that feels like it, it, it sticks true to Tolkien's vision. Um, the other side of that, in, in terms of one of our challenges as, as creators and opportunities, is that Tolkien never really wrote the novelized version of the Second Age story, right? You know, in the Third Age story that we know from the Peter Jackson films, um, you have sometimes day by day and even hour by hour descriptions of what Frodo ate for breakfast and, you know, where they slept that night, what kind of pillow it was. And in, in the, you know, part of the legendary we're dealing with, you've got like four sentences about Celebrimbor in, in, in our rights grant. Um, you know, and, and you sort of know Anatar arrived at Eregion here, they made some rings there, Eregion fell, and there was a war. Um, it, you know, so we then have to take those and connect those together in a way that feels as Tolkienian as possible. Uh, when you're doing an adaptation, especially when you're working from a backstory like this, um, you know, you're going to be hopefully breathing life into things that are almost, you know, in some cases, just a timeline. Um, and so we endeavor to do that with an enormous amount of reverence and, you know, uh, uh, preciousness about the themes and the ideas of good and evil and the preservation of nature and the importance of friendship and underdogs that, that obsess Tolkien. Um, you know, we think it's a hopeful show. It's it's dark sometimes, um, but but we really feel that the show is true to that spirit. And we and everyone we work with are obsessed every day with getting that right. Yeah, and we have been riveted, my family and I, since episode one, season one, to every single episode. And it does. It almost feels like you were given the Mona Lisa and said, okay, touch it up, but we don't want to see what you did and what was original. And that's how this felt. It feels like it was pulled right from the original lore as if it was intended to be done that way. So congrats on that. Um, as we enter into episode seven, we're just cooking through season two. Um, who's, they all have weight, but whose character do you think has the most intrigue in this final act of season two? Who do we really want to keep an eye on? Well, it's interesting, you know, uh, uh, season one in some ways had, you know, maybe one or two main protagonists. You had sort of Nori, the, the Harfoot over here, the Hobbit, and Galadriel, the Elf, and that was sort of the spine of that season. Um, this season's a little more of an ensemble piece, and I think as you're moving into the, the final third, the third act, as it were, of the season, um, Celebrimbor's story is very much central. Elrond's story is very central. Uh, uh, and Galadriel again, and Sauron. And I think the four of them, uh, there's also... Really I, 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 I would, I would, I would, with a stranger uh, uh, out in the I, desert. Uh, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> I, I'd also add Adar. Uh, Adar, I think, you know, in episode six, seven, and eight, you know, is going to go some really interesting places. You know, we, we, we see, you know, uh, where Galadriel is at the end of episode five. We see that the two of them are, are uh, now uh, together. Um, and uh, he is sort of going to you know, make her an offer. And uh, I think we're going to see that play out in really interesting ways in six, seven, and eight. And so he's a character that if you painted him with a broad brush, he's in one thing, he's a, a villain, you know, just as out for the orcs. Uh, we're going to see some real complexity in him in, in these final three episodes. Awesome. Well, it was a daunting task to take on. You guys have done it brilliantly. I appreciate you doing it. And as uh, fans of, of all of it, I uh, appreciate your time today and uh, good luck with all the future endeavors. Uh, Matt, thank Thanks, you very Matt. much for the kind words. And uh, I hope you enjoy those episodes. Uh, uh, we're really proud of them and uh, uh, we hope people really connect with them. Yeah, I think they will. So, yeah, I know we have. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you very thank much, you, sir. Matt.